Hey everyone, it's Fellow here, and in this video, I'm doing a complete review of the new Good Side Commander, Bard, just released in Rise to War. You can find Bard in the northern region of the map, and the first thing that I want to show you is what type of commander Bard is. He is a tier 3. Bard is a marksman and a descendant of Girion. He once accomplished the feat of killing a dragon, not just any dragon, Smog, with the Black Arrow. Let's have a look at Bard's skills. And I'm going to tell you guys right now that in my opinion, three of his four skills are going to be very useful in the current meta. Stay tuned though, because at the end, I'm gonna show you guys a breakdown all in one place of all his four skills and all the benefits that they have in each one of them so stay tuned for that at the end because it's going to be very useful for you to know and understand where he sits in the current meta his top r0 tree is called bowman has a one round cooldown that means it's going to proc in rounds two four six eight and ten and the first thing that it does the first thing of many is that it deals 250 percent physical damage to one enemy's formation so that's the first thing it deals damage to one formation two it inflicts bleed that deals 40 percent damage to the target and takes effect four times so that's two skills and one at level five skill damage dealt by one formation's commander minus 20 percent for one round and the effect is modified by the attack stat that's the third basically the third skill in the same tree. And at level 10, also target defense minus 10 for one round. This skill right here, you know, first you're pumping out damage. Second, then you're adding more damage with the bleed. So Bard is doing the damage. So th that's the first skill tree that it's showing that Bard might be a damage dealer. Or is he? Let's find out. The second thing that he does, then he mitigates damage from damage dealers. So that seems a directly, a direct counter to the current damage dealing meta. And at level five also, you're doing some extra, you're getting more damage because you're reducing the target's defense. Okay, that's the first tree. His bottom R0, the first of many things that he also does, is that it deals 90% physical damage to four enemy formations. That's the first thing it does. So another skill tree that Bard pumps out damage. The second thing that he does now in the same skill he reduces the damage dealt by the target's formation commander by 10 percent for one round also affected by the attack stat now remember though this has a two round cooldown so it's going to proc rounds three six and nine but this will affect all four of the target because you're hitting all four so you're doing 90 percent damage and you're also reducing the damage by the commander in that formation by 10 does two things in one the nice thing about this as well is that hitting so many formations at once it will eat up white council faster that's eight instances of damage if you're hitting the unit and the commander hmm. at level five that was all at the top level at level five then you're increasing the damage because it has a 30 percent chance to inflict bleed that deals 40 percent damage to the target and takes effect four times and to top it all off at level 10 this skill gains pursuit it gains pursuit so at the top level it's great to eat white council does damage eats white council does damage mitigates damage from damage dealers and gains pursuit so it's great against evasion all of this in two skill trees so so far it's showing that bart is looking like a damage dealer but is he Let's look at his R3. His R3 is a little different. This is his true buffing tree. Okay, it's called King of Dale. The attack of man and dwarves in the commander's formation, plus 30. Not only that, though, doesn't have only one skill again. Has a 30% chance to deal maximum damage each round. At level 5, unit defense, plus 10. And at level 10, the initial effect, right? The, thir the plus 30 and the 30% here, affects, effect applies to all races you can't see the rest but it says all races so if you want to run elves to do that you, you'd have to then max it out at level 10. this is his tree that i like the least it's still a good tree if you compare it to other troop buffing uh, skills in the game and let's look now at his r5 dragon shooter dragon shooter has a three uh two round cooldown on rounds three six nine 
launches an attack that deals 500% physical damage once to two formations, but the commander will no longer launch normal attacks from round three onward. This is the only skill that only has one like one skill in it at level five to synergize with his top and bottom r0 immediately inflicts the full damage of the bleed effect active on the target effective up to three times bleed is something not not like many people don't really look into so we have to play bard whoever is able to get him to understand what the level five does not exactly sure on what this means talked with a few different players knowledgeable players our syndicate group and we're not sure exactly what that entails we'll find out soon enough though and at level 10 just the cherry on the top has a 20 percent chance to inflict madness on the target for one round i i love his skills you know, now that i've had a few hours to sit down discuss with people and also just look into all this all the things that all of his skills will do i find that his his kit is very versatile they will allow you to play different roles in your formation so to summarize the benefits of bard's kit let's do a quick summary here bard's top r0 bowman first he deals damage commander damage two he has bleed which means more damage and possibly something that we're going to test is does the instances of bleed eat up white council three he has damage mitigation which is great versus damage dealers and four reduces the defense of enemy which means more damage for him his bottom r0 descendant of Girion, again he deals damage in this case to four formations which is great versus white council two he has more bleed more damage possibly again eating up white council instances and three he gains pursuit that skill gains pursuit which is great versus evasion his r3 king of dale one increases the attack of men and dwarfs two gives chance to deal maximum damage three it increases troop uh, unit defense and four once you max that out you have the effect applying to all races in your formation his r5 one he does more damage two he improves the bleed skills and three he has the chance to cast madness looking at some of, the, of my favorite formations currently in 2.0 i see bart's kit being one of the best mitigators or walls that i could face in a formation because he deals with the biggest issues that we are facing right now damage dealers damage mitigation from white council or even falcons damage mitigation because it's also instance base and the third what i like to play is with the evasion from gil so those three things he somehow somewhat deals with them he has in my opinion a great great kit when you look at all his three skill trees you think that he might be a, a pure damage dealer and so huge shout out to vessi for sending over some estimates in the damage output percentage bard has and let's have a look here how he stacks in damage comparing to our three main good side damage dealers dane bjorn and gemway so you know having a rough estimate bard can pump out about six six and a half thousand percent of damage throughout the fight that compared to dane's damage output can go from anywhere between six thousand seven hundred and ninety two all the way to nine thousand four hundred and forty seven depending on your respect level in second place we have bjorn bjorn can go from anywhere that's a high the highest damage output our second best damage dealer is bjorn he can go from anywhere from five thousand seven hundred at the very low all the way to ten thousand one hundred and ninety eight it's pretty high and in third place you ha we have gimli Gimli can go from 5,176 to 7,656. And when you compare those three to Bard, Bard will sit around 6,700, about. Like I said, also depending, depending on your respect level. If you can max out three trees, then it's one number. If you can only max out two trees, then it's a different number. So where does Bard really sit? Also, a shout out to Omni for doing a quick napkin math as to the possible total damage output that bard can possibly do and this is what he had to say at zenith six he can probably do best case assuming all bleed trigger that battle goes to round 10 that his bottom r0 applies bleed 
30% of the time on average. And this is, these are the numbers. 2,400 damage from normal attacks, 14,400 from the Bowman activations, 10,000 damage from Bowman bleeds, 15,000 from the Senate of, of Girion activations, 7,200 from the Senate of Girion bleeds, 43,500 from Dragon Shooter for a total of 92,500 damage in ideal conditions. Thank you, Amanai, for doing that. So, guys, you can see the possibility of Bard's potential damage output as a commander we're not talking about the units as a commander is pretty significant now that we've looked at all his skills and seen the potential for commander damage that he has let's look at his stats and see how they stack up against the other damage dealers so bard comes out with a 21 of 22 of a damage range he is not sitting at the highest level comparing to dane or some others that are pure damage dealers, but he's 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 up there. He comes at a 100, 1,112 of HP and command of 36. His base attack is 22. Take into consideration that the, that he is not level 50 here, so that that number would go up. His his defense comes at 18 and his focus at 14. Now something that did surprise me, it's his initiative. Him at base at level five has a 17 of initiative. If you compare it to a lot of our powerful damage dealers, he has, comparing to some of them, more than double of their initial initiative. This is gonna play a huge role for Bard uh, in you know, going first, proccing all those things before everybody else, especially some of the commanders that you wanna, you wanna counter with him. And like I said in the first video that we did when we announced that the Bard was coming out, his unique is called Black Arrow, giving commander HP, commander attack, commander defense, and unit attack. The trait on his unique is, is okay. I don't find this to be game breaking or game changing in any way. From round six, honor the commander's attacks. Ignore 36% of the enemy's defense stat. It, I think it's a good skill and 36% is not, you know, it's nothing, but you know, when this starts, late in the game i don't feel like that's gonna be a huge game changer but uniques in my opinion just are just little cherries on the top for people that can get them so i i would probably get this when or i unlock him to summarize all of bart's skills he's a damage dealer with multiple instances of damage and bleed damage he's a damage mitigator which is really strong he has pursuit for countering evasion and in my opinion bart has an incredible kit with the potential to be one of the best in the game maybe he won't deal as much damage as our top damage dealers but because his kit is so versatile it has so many uses in any formation question now is is bard good for low spenders or is he only useful for whales is he one of those commanders that you can use them at low respect or no do you have to well out in order for him to be good and in my opinion he will be a great commander for both low spenders, even going for R1 and whales. Like I mentioned earlier, his kit is so versatile that you'll be able to use him in different types of formations and also spending levels. You know, I, I spent quite a bit of time thinking of Bard since we did the first video, and I'm gonna share with you some of my ideas for formations. Depending on his damage output and how his mitigation and the bleed will work, you might need to use him as a third damage dealer slash hybrid support. Because if you exchange your full damage dealer for him, you might find that he doesn't pump out as much damage as your other damage dealers for the same level of respect that you're, you're getting. So this is why I have two formation ideas and I will be testing as soon as I unlock him so type one it's three damage dealers and a support in this case you can run two full-on damage dealers of your choice bard as your third damage dealer slash hybrid and fourth your support type number two is you run your main damage dealer bard as your second damage dealer and then two supports of your choice in my case for both of those formations this is how i would run if I was running three damage dealers, I'd probably run Dane, Bjorn, Bard, and Gandalf the White if I'm playing full good side. And if I'm playing two damage dealers and two supports, then I run probably Dane or Bjorn, Dane or Bjorn, one of the two, Bard, and then Gandalf the White, and 
personally, I probably run Gil. I like the idea of having the evasion in the early rounds. And if you're playing NRP, basically you just get the roles that I mentioned just, just barely, and then you switch and you see what works better. You know, you can try alerts and bard and the shadow, then bard and shadow both will just eat up white council. Or you can try, you know, Sestaro, Scalhelm. It just depends on who your, what your formation looks like currently. And just to conclude, guys, in my opinion, Bard is a commander you're going to want to have in your team. I think he's going to have such a critical and a fun role to play in the current meta that we have. And just looking at his kit and seeing how many different things he does, it's, it's just exciting to theorycraft the different build ideas that you can for Bard. Now, if you guys want to save some money while you guys are trying to unlock Bard and also want to support my channel, please consider using my affiliate link. A portion of the money you guys spend goes to support my channel and all the things that we do in and out of YouTube. And that's gonna do it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video, this review of Bard. As we learn more about him, we're gonna come back here and do another review and give you guys some more feedback. But before we go, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more Rise to War videos. Take care, see you guys in the next one.